What is up guys and welcome back to another video my team episode number six for season one This is the Monaco Grand Prix one of the most hotly anticipated races of the season for me uh, And it's gonna suit our car perfectly down to a T so I'm looking forward to a big race here this weekend Make sure you smash the like button and subscribe if you're excited for this series continuing for another day. It's going to be tough this weekend. Going to Silverstone today, we've had <laughs> minimal sleep, but it's fine. The grind continues. Uh, overnight, we hit 700,000 subscribers, so thank you guys so much for that. Um, I can't believe how quickly that's, that's happened uh, with... Uh, F122 being a thing this week, um, you guys have absolutely smashed it. Thank you so much. We're going to have to celebrate it in some way. Maybe do a cheeky 100% race around Monaco. Yeah, I think that might have to happen. Anyway, uh, upgrades. We are looking at our options. We had the failed front downforce upgrade. Unfortunately, hit us on the way into the Spanish Grand Prix. That's definitely a option, as is the engine. We've had so many upgrades, uh, discount uh, options for that, so that it's pushed down to 94 uh, resource points. We're definitely going to take that. We're going to take the front downforce major upgrade, and we can potentially do one other thing. We'll have to wait and see. We get the roll dampers tire wear upgrade heading into this race, so that'll be nice and handy uh, in terms of just pushing the tires a little bit longer. Better tire wear equals more flexibility, especially at a place like Monaco and on this game where you like, well, where overcutting is uh, preferable. So um, hopefully that upgrade to the tire wear will come in handy. Anyway, upgrade wise, we do improve ever so slightly, uh, but everyone else is kind of keeping tempo, keeping momentum. Uh, we really have lost a bit of momentum, a bit of ground to the other teams. Uh, with our failed upgrades, so hopefully we can get a wriggle on very soon and uh, You know start overtaking some teams, but it's gonna take a little bit a little bit of time to uh, get that going Anyway, here we are for Friday practice here in Monaco. We are running uh, again the the highest wings we've ever run uh, this weekend 42 and 50 wings it's basically basically like 9 11 wings I think is the equivalent there uh, compared to the old game, but uh, yeah, we're still playing around with setups. I think uh, from next episode or the episode after we're gonna have a, a serious look at setups and see if there's anything different that I'm doing wrong um, but uh, yeah, we get the Race run program done and one in the books and we do a cheeky flick spin to celebrate We haven't been able to do flick spins since like F1 2013 2014 uh, so it's good to have that uh, little feature back in the game. And how's that parking? That is purple parking if ever I've seen it. Forget the formation lap. That is the pinnacle of parking. Anyway, uh, Friday practice is done. Two seconds off the pace. A few DNFs there. Vettel and Schumacher, I'm guessing, crashed together. And then Max Verstappen had his own little incident as well halfway through the session. Um, he literally went straight into a barrier. I think maybe a Mirabeau or something. It was uh, oh so sudden, uh, that's one. The AI mistakes continuing uh, this round. I'm expecting a lot of AI mistakes at this race. If they're making mistakes at easy tracks, then they're definitely going to be crashing at Monaco. And uh, the practice programs or the practice uh, results kind of speak for themselves already. Uh, in terms of the uh, power unit components, we're going to have to unfortunately run at some newer components at Monaco, which is not ideal. The reliability hasn't been great. Um, I signed up for this. We're definitely going to be taking some engine penalties this season. I mean, we've already taken a few, but, um, yeah, not ideal to run some slightly newer components. We would have liked to have used our first column or, or slightly worn components that are nearing 50% in an ideal world, but, uh, we don't want to be running anything that's suboptimal. We don't want to be running anything that's beyond 50%. Even in a power, uh, non-power track like Monaco, uh, it will be quite costly. And I want to put the best components in to give us the best chance because we might be on for some points, potentially, this weekend. Anyway, uh, we have 1,200 resource points. I saved 400 resource points heading into this practice session. I've got some discounts now, some of which for the uh, weight reduction, which I think I'm going to go for here. 900 resource points, and it'll be on in time for the British Grand Prix. 
Let's see if I can keep the streak going and do the Austrian Grand Prix career mode on the day of the Austrian Grand Prix. We'll have to wait and see. We're going to do turbo durability, and now we're going to head into qualifying. All right, here we go for the most important qualifying session of the year. Some say it's more important than the actual race. And, uh, well, in real life, you would be right. But this is the game, and you can always do a lot more in the race with uh, AI, which, uh, you know, AI. Uh, anyway, here we are for our first lap, and it seems all right at this stage. A little bit of understeer. I, I feel like Monaco is maybe a little bit more tr it's, it's definitely more tricky this year. Uh, some of the curbs are reprofiled. It's easy to, to snag on them, um, to bottom out on them. Um, so it's not as easy to flow over them. I, I'm talking the Nobel chicane. This one coming up here, if you hit the curb wrong, like it's literally an angle thing. Uh, it can give you floor damage. It could have done so on the previous game, but it's a lot more common this year. Um, the cars don't rotate as nicely at low speed, it's a little bit more cumbersome. Heavier cars, ground effects, um, Raskas is really hard to rotate for here. Down to third gear, that was okay on that occasion, but it's very easy to like overset the marks on the brakes and it just goes straight on sometimes. And that goes for like most corners, it is very easy. Oh my word! Lando Norris nearly killed us, or shall I say I nearly killed Lando Norris there, because I wasn't focused on where I was going. I've not taken my advice literally when I was in Monaco for the track guide. Have a listen. Watch out for the uh, pit lane entry on exit. Sometimes if you're really unlucky, someone might come out of the pit lane while you're driving through, so don't hug the right hand side. I've seen too many people KO themselves by a car coming out of the pit lane. And we nearly fell foul of our own advice, so it's clearly do as I say, not as I do it, not as I do. Oh, I'm too tired for this. Anyway, that was that was too close. That was way too close for comfort. We were too busy focused on having the uh, the shortest run to the line, and that um, yeah, that nearly very much cost us. Anyway, that lap was fairly decent. Uh, we're well inside the top ten, at least in our first run, and I think I can save us at a softs by going. To the end. I, I'm not sure we need to go out again. We're only 1.1 seconds away from pole position, which is a lot closer than what we normally are. So I think we're safe. My teammate's six tenths away. So we're going to save a set of tires and progress through to qualifying two. Thank you very much. That. Right. Good. P21. Everyone improved? Everyone improved. How did that happen? How is everyone literally gone like eight tenths, maybe a second faster than what they previously were? Oscar Piastri has gone from seven six tenths behind me to half a second in front of me. How has he pulled that out of his butt? Oh my word, everyone has improved. It's Monaco, we're now starting at the, as if that's happened. As if, like, is that AI time simulation glitch? Normally that doesn't happen until like seasons two or three when there's a billion upgrades on the car. But in season one, I, I don't know, that's a bit dodgy. How did they find so much pace from run one to run two? That is some crazy track evolution, if you ask me. But it looks like we're taking some more grid penalties for this race. Uh, we're going to take an MGUH. Haven't taken a second control electronics, so we can't dip into a third. That's frustrating. Ugh. It's time for the race. We're fast. Let's do this. A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word, that's how Mr. Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean. 
there's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. The prestigious Circuit de Monaco then is not all that dissimilar today to the layout that made its debut almost a century ago. It's two miles and 19 corners through the streets of Monte Carlo. And although the average lap speed of around 93 miles per hour is the lowest of the season, the tiny margins for error make it the natural habitat of the safety car. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, Sergio Perez and Norris, Ricardo, Bottas, Mick Schumacher and Kevin Magnussen, Fernando Alonso, Joe, Pierre Gasly and Ocon, Stroll, Latifi, Alex Albon, and Sebastian Vettel, Oscar Piastri, Sonoda, Benjamin, and George Russell ends our grid lineup. And now it's time to head down to the track. Now I wonder, Anthony Davidson, might we be in for some early pit stops today from the midfield teams, trying to put a bit of pressure on or disrupt things for the leaders? If you're in the middle of the pack, you know, you got your own race to run, I don't think they're going to be thinking about causing trouble up front. However, closer to the head of the pack, don't be surprised to see some split strategies. If you're running second and third, for example, bringing one car in for an undercut while leaving the other one out there longer can put a lot of pressure on the leader and maybe force them into an error. Okay, here we are on the grid for the Monaco Grand Prix. Mark has been awfully quiet on the team radios. He uh, hasn't been giving me my pre-race pep talk. Uh, and unfortunately, that, that's... Uh, an omission in today's race. So uh, we're lacking... Are we lacking motivation? Of course we're not. It's Monaco. P21 on the grid. We're fired up for this race. I want to make my way through very quickly. We're going to start on the medium compound tires. It's a big risk starting on hards and just waiting for everyone to fall over and get ratioed or pit stop. I'm not sure. So we're going to force our way through with medium compound tires. Away we go for the start of the Monaco Grand Prix for the first of many in this game. Heading into turn one, we get up the inside of Sonoda and nearly bin ourselves inside of our teammate. But we get away without any front wing damage. Sonoda goes around the outside and we are back down to last place once again. This is going to be a tough Grand Prix. Uh, rotation at low speed seems to be a little bit difficult. Maybe we haven't optimized the setup fully, but we are a lot faster than what we showed in qualifying. We were inside the top 10 when we did our lap. I mean, maybe some, a lot of people didn't get their laps in either, but uh, I really feel like we've got a lot to prove in this race, and I'm not taking any prisoners. As we go around the outside of George Russell in the Mercedes, he had a crash in qualifying early on, which uh, has demoted him to the back, and... Oh, he's lost his wing. So George Russell's woes continue. He's, he's having a horrid season. I think ever since Miami or the race before that, he's been... He's been crashing every race, like, first lap. It's been a nightmare for him. Uh, yeah, Imola. Um, and maybe even before that. So, George is, is not having a good time. We, though, we, we've had a roller coaster season. We've certainly had our highs, and we've definitely had some lows. Let's hope the Monaco is, uh, is a highlight for this season. But uh, we need to get a wriggle on. Lap three, and Piastri is getting away. And at this stage, I was thinking that uh, I'd back off a little bit and save the tires for like later on in the stints. I noticed in, in previous races, we get really strong towards the end of the medium compound tire stint. And so for these intervening laps here, I was just easing off. I was maybe using higher gears and not putting much, much stress through the tires or the gearbox, looking after the rear tires using higher gears. But then it got to a point where, hang on a second, am I, am I, giving Piastri space, or am I now starting to genuinely lose touch here? And I think now the latter is the case, because I was backing off and, and not attacking my teammate, but now I seem to genuinely not have the pace. He's uh, he's pulling away. 1.3 seconds. Oh no, Piastri is out with an engine failure. We had one race, one or two races where there weren't any Red Bull Honda retirements, but now we are back to our usual retirement ways. Piastri is out of the Grand Prix, and uh, once again, surprise, surprise, there is no appearance of the safety car, which certainly would have helped us in bringing us closer to the pack. Lap six now, 
And uh, look at that, the tyres are getting on a bit. Actually, we've got some front wing damage. That's what I was highlighting there. Um, I think it's on the right-hand side. You can see it's slightly discoloured. And, uh, well, that might explain the pace or lack of in this race. So, we're falling away from the Williams. Normally, I, I would have expected to be a bit quicker. I, would, I was hoping to be top 10 pace and challenging the likes of McLaren and, and the Alpines. But now we're in 18th place. We're holding up the guys at the back of the race, going nowhere. The rear diffuser's got some damage. You're definitely going to feel the effects from here on out, I'm afraid. Oh, no. We've got diffuser damage as well. Where, where's that come from? Mark was awfully quiet when, whenever that popped up, and now you can see the evidence of the diffuser damage. The, uh, the rear end is a lot less stable now because the floor is damaged. It's not working as uh, efficiently as it normally is. So uh, it's a bit unstable uh, on the rear. And also, we, we're, la we're losing downforce on the front. We're losing downforce on the rear. The car ahead is a second a lap faster than you. And we've got absolutely no pace. Losing a second a lap to Albon. And Latifi, this is a nightmare Monaco Grand Prix. Um, I, I, that 100% that explains it. We've obviously touched the wall very lightly somewhere, but then I think we've ran over uh, the curbs in the wrong way, possibly the Novel Chicane or this last chicane up here. Uh, the high curbs can give you a bit of phantom floor damage, and I think that's exactly what's happened. We bottom out at that chicane sometimes, and uh, the damage has bit, just been light enough to uh, not attract the attention of Mark telling me until now. But uh, it's obviously given us damage, so it's costing us big time in this race, unfortunately. Lap 15, and uh, we're just trying to stretch this stint until a, a safety car, which I think we might get here. This is the Alpine of Alonso with an engine failure heading into the last corner. And I think that's the first time we've seen a Renault-powered failure of sorts. So, um... It seems every team is at risk, I suppose. They're all they're all human. Uh, unfortunately, no safety car pit window is now open, though, and we're seeing some of the uh, front runners making stops now. This is Valtteri Bottas going on to a set of hard compound tyres, and away he goes. We'll be following suit pretty much now, and we are going to take the front wing to see uh, if we can salvage anything in this race. There is the, uh, the damage you can see on the... Right hand, or the left hand side. So, uh, yeah, not not fun. We're, we're going to lose two positions. We're giving up a position to. There seems to have been a problem attaching the front wing. We need to try and put that behind us now and finish the race strong. Good. Pit stop error. I mean, it doesn't matter now. We're in last place. We gave up the only two positions uh, that we had to uh, Sonoda and Sebastian Vettel. Vettel hasn't actually come in yet. He's coming in next lap, but I'm almost certain he's going to jump us as well with the overcut. Um, we're going to have to hope that maybe he has a front wing change if we're going to have any hope of finishing ahead of someone in this race. There's been a lack of mistakes here at Monaco. It has to be said, the AI have been keeping it very clean in the actual race itself. Here comes Sebastian Vettel making his stop on the very next lap. And this is for the wooden spoon. Sonoda versus Vettel versus myself. We'll see now if we've got a, with a, a full complement of front wing whether we can get in the battle and not finish last in this race, but it's going to be tough. 20 laps to go. Tyres are now coming up to temperature. Uh, Vettel's are certainly not up to temperature, and Sonoda is all over him as he heads into uh, the Fairmont Tampin. No moves being made as of yet, so I think Vettel is going to get away with that one. Uh, nice little stop there, and strategy from Aston Martin working the, uh, the overcut to perfection. Meanwhile, the fight for the front. Carlos Sainz is leading this race. Carlos has really had a big swing of momentum ever since his first win. He's gained a huge bout of confidence and he's proving to be a big thorn in the side of Charles Leclerc. They're only about 15 seconds away from lapping me at this point, so our chances of getting points are slipping by the second because... Oh, no! What's happened there? Here's the replay. Coming out of the uh, slow right-hander of Portier. I think we've just dipped a couple of wheels onto the curb ever so slightly. It was only literally a couple of millimeters on the curb. And uh, that's been enough to send us around and into the barrier. We've lost our wing. And uh, I think that pretty much confirms that this is going to be a doomed race here in Monaco. Onto another set of medium compound tires. Um, hopefully the medium will give us a bit of pace. It'll be slightly used. 
but uh, should be okay to get us to the end. Another front wing change. The boys are getting good at their pit stops, courtesy of me. I mean, I've, Piastri's not here to give them... Oh, no, we've got our original medium compound tyres on that we started the race on. Amazing. This this race is going swimmingly. We're now lapped down, and uh, we, might, we might get lapped by everyone in this race. So we're going to go back to the pit lane, change to the hard compound tyres again, and... Oh, no. I don't even know what to say at this point. Uh, we're going to wait for a gap. You can see the Aston, oh, the pass goes past us, and then we, uh, oh, no, we're causing a roadblock. We are causing a literal roadblock. I'm so sorry. Uh, well, that's not my intention. I tried to get out in front of the traffic before it arrived, and, oh, now there's been a pileup, and Albon's out of the race. This is not what I wanted uh, but it's, it, oh, the, Jesus, why is, the, why is the Aston reversing on a straight? I was literally leaving the scene of the crime. Uh, Albon probably should have gone a bit slower into there. Safety car has been deployed. That's the last thing I wanted in this race. But um, I suppose you've got to get a move on when you're parked 90 degrees in the tunnel, pretty much blocking it. There's, it's, it's not an ideal scenario. Uh, whatever you do there, but the AI were a bit silly. Like we finally see uh, some uh, some mistakes from the AI. We just had to force them, basically. But uh, yeah, that's this is this is just not our day, guys. It is certainly not our day. I usually I'm very good at Monaco. I, I pride myself on my lack of mistakes around here, but uh, it's just it, not feeling ourselves, I suppose. Uh, the car is feeling. A lot different than what it normally does. I mean, I think it's a lack of concentration. That's what it is because we had no pace in this race. We were absolutely nowhere. We were just circulating to get to the end. And uh, yeah, it's, we, we, have, we found ourselves in an unusual scenario where we were fighting for literally nothing in that race. And that's how the mistakes came about. So I can only apologize about that. But uh, now we just have to hope for more carnage. That This is literally what I'm still in the race for now. I don't want to give up. I want to keep going. It's Monaco. Anything's possible. Crashes are certainly possible in this race, and I just have to hope for 9, 10 crashes to happen for us to get points or uh, close to to, uh, to get in the fight. Anyway, uh, 10 laps to go for us now. Uh, we're, we've caught up to the pack uh, by virtue of the safety car. We've put on a new set of soft compound tyres. It is going to be a stretch to get these tyres to the end, but this is going to be... Just a test to see if we can do so. This is the fastest lap attempt as well for us. Uh, we've made up huge ground on this pack. Um, and so much so that I think we're actually going to get blocked in our fastest lap attempts. Yellow flag up ahead. This could be anything as we head into to back. And it looks like a number of drivers are going very slowly. I think it's Pierre Gasly with some front wing damage potentially. As uh, he's only one second up the road. We can actually overtake someone in this race. Gasly, I think, has got a puncture. We go up the inside of the AlphaTauri driver, and we're now into 18th place. We are not last in this race, guys. Can you believe it? After all the woes we've had in this race, there is someone in this field who is having a worse race than what we are. And that's comforting, I suppose. Anyway, it's 18th place. We avoid the shame of the wooden spoon for now. Uh, but we're getting blue flags for the, the person behind us who we just overtook. So uh, hopefully we can make some swift progress on the Aston Martin up the inside into the Novel Chicane. Thank you very much. Very awkward curbing there. It, it just kind of sends the car wide. You lose a bit of grip as you go over that as it bottoms out. I think we're going to have to run some higher ride height next season as a safety precaution. Because you really need to attack the curbs here in Monaco. Or certainly I do to achieve my pace and we just haven't been able to unlock it um not being able to use the curbs as nicely and the low speed rotation has just been awful this race we haven't been able to blue flag okay blue flag conditions create a gap and let the car behind through yeah we just haven't been able to use our uh, usual methods or driving styles techniques to uh, extract the pace out of this uh car this weekend so uh, we're definitely going to have to go back to the drawing board. Like I said, we're going to have to look at setups quite intently and uh, solve the, the riddle that is low speed rotation. Uh, and this will help us at all circuits. As we get a penalty for ignoring blue flags. Is this game okay? I'm actually faster than these people around me. I'm not holding up 
whoever the hell I just overtook. But uh, I've been given a five second penalty for ignoring blue flags. How is a backmarker supposed to get back in the race if they just have to give up the places they just gained? Oh, we got another penalty. I'm not even holding him up. I'm literally a second ahead and nearly pulling out of blue flags. I'm about to make a move on Ocon. What? I, I don't get it. We're going to go the inside of Ocon here as a means to avoid another blue flag penalty. We're going to put cars between us and uh, hopefully just pull away from Ocon then. We should be able to. On the soft compound tyres, they, they are getting on a bit and I think I've nudged the wall. I think I've given myself some more damage. Here's the replay up the inside, into the back. It wouldn't be a Monaco video without a Raskas dive bomb, would it? So, um, there we go. I don't know why I said to back earlier. I'm, I'm, I am pretty tired. I was up until 2am doing this race and then editing until like 3, 4am. And here I am again, 10am, before the British Grand Prix, ready to uh, send this one out to your sub feed. Another penalty. I mean, at this rate, the race is already in the bin at this point. Gasly makes a pit stop. So there is... The smallest hope that I might not finish last in this race, even with the 15 second penalty. Uh, the gap is, well, seven seconds once you factor in my behemoth for the other penalty after this race. Uh, I'm going to, for the sake of not finishing last, adhere to the blue flags and see if I can beat Pierre Gasly. But it's it's going to be tough. It's The gap is now 18 seconds. We are losing our margin very quickly, especially with the blue flags having to let Latifi go through. But uh, we are really falling off in terms of pace as well because our tyres are wearing rapidly in this race. Uh, Gasly cut the gap down from uh, 15 seconds to, to nothing now as uh, the tyres have well and truly hit the cliff. And uh, yeah, pace is nowhere. Anyway, it's a Ferrari 1-2. Carlos Sainz gets another win in this season of Carimo. That is three on the bounce for the Ferrari driver. So... He is on an absolute roll at this stage, whereas our form, our luck, our consistency, everything seems to be in the mud in this race, and I've even damaged my wing a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, it's not been an ideal race. That diffuser damage really KOing our speed. We just uh, have been unfortunate. Uh, the pace has been lacking, and I think that's been the ultimate thing. Even with a perfect race today, it wouldn't look like we would have got points. P18 and a race to forget. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. My word. I think that's the worst Monaco Grand Prix I've ever had. I don't think I've ever turned up to a race here and had that little pace. They've done it then. They've won here in Monaco with an emphatic performance and a victory they can be proud of for many years to come. Anthony Davidson. What helped them deliver this results, do you think? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari do it again. They do. Uh, Carlos Sainz is getting awfully used to winning, I think. Uh, the dynamic of the team will be very interesting with Charles Leclerc now on the back foot. Carlos with all the momentum. How is that power struggle going to evolve over the course of this season? Uh, Red Bull seem to be nowhere, even, even at Monaco, which is a strong track for them. Uh, Mercedes and Hamilton getting into the final spot on the podium. Uh, Ferrari absolutely running away with both championships, it has to be said. Um, Red Bull, they, they can't wait for that you know, performance update from Codemasters quick enough to uh, give them a buff in terms of reliability, but also pace potentially as well. 18th place, uh, certainly a race to forget for Marduk Motorsport. Um, Oscar Piastri with a DNF as well. We were just nowhere in that race and it was evident after we got the damage uh, after like two or three laps that uh, this was going to be a tough race from, from here on out. Diffuser damage, irreparable. Anything to the floor, you can't touch, you can't fix until you get it back into Parc Ferme and basically replace the whole floor. So, um, yeah, that was, a, that was a doomed race for us. Maybe an error, a few errors there. We, we, we made a lot of blunders, uh, but I think maybe the biggest was probably the setup. The fact that we weren't really able to fight 
uh, this weekend. No rotation at low speed, and I think the ride height could have been a little bit higher for us to uh, really confidently use the curbs and be a little bit quicker. But um, it's all a learning experience. We'll uh, come back bigger, better, stronger for the next race in Season 2. Um, it's a shame we couldn't really fight for points in the end there because I feel like if we qualified further up, then certainly more was on the uh, on the table. Anyway, um, here's the incidents of the race. Quite a few uh, warnings for collisions. A lot of ignoring blue flag incidents for me there, which, uh, again, I don't agree with, but... That's why I'm a driver and not a decision maker. That's why I'm not part of the stewards. Anyway, there we go. A disastrous race for us there uh, in the drivers, the constructors. Let's have a look at that now, see where we're at. No points for us today, so we move down to P15. I think Lando Norris overtakes us uh, in the standings in that McLaren. They're just getting faster and faster, those guys, and pulling further away in both championships. There was a time where we were uh, level pegging with McLaren and the constructors, but now that uh, seems like a pipe dream trying to beat them now. We certainly need upgrades to go our way. But there we go, guys. That has been this video for today. The Monaco Grand Prix. Um, I was not expecting this result uh, heading into this race. Normally, I can count on my best results of the season. But it was just an off day, I think. I think we just have to put it down to that. So apologies about that. We will bounce back stronger in the next one. Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It's a circuit which naturally doesn't suit our car. We need to... Uh, make sure we've got the drag reduction upgrades on, uh, engine power upgrades coming for that race as well. So hopefully, uh, with us shoring up the weaknesses of our car, we can be a little bit more competitive at all circuits. So we'll see how we go. Hopefully we have more luck in the next race and uh, we can do something in this season of Karimo. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. You see plenty more F122 content. Hopefully I'll see you at Silverstone today. Or tomorrow, it might go tomorrow, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, thank you very much. For 700k, your support has been incredible this week. And uh, I'll try and reward you guys with more daily content. Until the next one, guys, I'll see you next time.